Hello and welcome to The Hump. Today we ask you, will your job still exist in 10 years time? We talk future proofing. Let me introduce you to our gorgeous panel today. Meg. Hello. Julius. And Jace. Hi. Hello. Alright, um, now let's talk about future proofing. I found uh, this really interesting video from a lab out of Japan uh, of uh, some new techniques in projection mapping. So uh, let's just have a quick look. Dynamic projection mapping onto deforming non-rigid surface. Our projection mapping can be performed at 1000 frames per second. This is achieved by our original high-speed vision and projection technology. Our newly proposed marker is drawn on a target by using infrared ink which is invisible to the human eye. This enables robust and high-speed non-rigid surface tracking even in the presence of occlusions. Projection mapping onto clothes is one of the promising applications. This can be expected to provide a new and exciting way in apparel business such as an interactive clothing design. In addition, our system can distinguish multiple targets and project different images based on the marker recognition. Okay, so when I, when I found that, the first comments I found on it was, okay, boys in projection, boys and girls in projection mapping, there goes your jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all those people who are now currently involved in, you know, sort of painstakingly putting together that kind of effect and yeah. then that's maintaining it, with it, and it's like, okay, that's just been automated. Yeah. I mean, it's, I feel like that industry is only like five years old tops already, and, mm. you know, I mean, okay, that's just still proof of concept stuff, but mm. uh, you can see where it's heading. Oh, it just moves so fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the question is today, uh, what do we need to do in the industry to make sure we're not unemployed in 10 years and what? more can be automated. Well, let's look at what we've lost. Okay. We used to have multi-vision shows of carousel projectors all slide sequenced away and that mm -hmm. took many, many hundreds of hours to set up and get right. Mm -hmm. We used to set up cathode ray projectors, CRT mm -hmm. projectors, mm -hmm. and they went away. Um, there are so many things that are going away okay. as we as we watch. Well, I mean, recent example, I mean, stuff that I used to do when I was younger, but, uh, just, you know, casual jobs, uh, you've got a AV presentation, a, uh, you know, in a seminar room or a function room, you know, somebody talking on a radio microphone being recorded, playing video back, you know, audio for that. You know, I'd be in the corner of a room operating it, but, you know, we've just done a national tour with three seminar rooms with no humans. It's all there. So it's all, it's all there. Somebody plugs in HDMI to the laptop, yep. it's done, there's sound, auto mixed and DSP. Yep, yeah. you room don't control. Need, uh, room, you know, room control on the wall. You don't need any people there at all. There might be one tech in the building. I don't think you need to be scared about how do you future proof it. It's just like, as you said, things, things have changed, they've evolved, but it's like a shift sideways. Mm. Like if you're open to change, mm. um, like yes, prepare yourself. It's like, okay, well, what else can I do to make what I do more rounded? Mm. Mm. So um, as long as technology is not taking all the people jobs, but well, I, I don't think so. There's all, there, there has to be something else. What do you see for the future for your boys, your teenage boys? Career. They're eighteen. They're out of there. No, okay. Well, <laughs> one wants to be in a combat medic, and the other one just wants to be a basketballer. Whether or not this happens, they're still young. They'll change their mind. Mm. Uh, you know, there's there'll, there'll be jobs. There'll mm. be jobs. They just have to have lot, lots of options. Mum always said to me, be a secretary, you'll always have a job. <laughs> so, I, but so I did that. I hated it. Yeah. But, um, you know, all we, the typewriter's gone, the computer's did gone. Did you take the, dictation? I did. I used <laughs> to do... I was a stenographer. So can you do shorthand? I can do shorthand. Wow, well, good. Yes. Write my name in shorthand. I, I could write anything down. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's I think actually. that's an elephant. I'm <laughs> no, but I'm just saying things change. Mm. And, um, you know, they evolve to something else. It's just keeping an open mm. mind and being positive. Right. And 
educated. Okay, well in terms of tech in our industry, I mean we're already seeing a lot of audio being automated and I can see that trend going on. There's auto mixing is now more common in digital desks, uh, obviously there's DSP on the install side. Uh, I, I can actually see you know less and less sound techs being uh, used and I can see st stuff that's formulaic. Mm. Like, um, you know, we were talking about cover bands before. Stuff where you kind of make the same decisions every time. I can actually see that getting more and more. There'll be an auto mix function where it'll determine this is a love song, this is a ballad, yeah. this is a jazz tune. There is. I mean, there's an automated mastering service mm. called Lander, L A N D R, yeah, where you just upload yeah. your finished song and it compares it against a database and then spits out a result. I mean, yeah, most mastering engineers will, will argue that oh, it's not as good as what they can do, and it's not, but it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, fifty bucks yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know, I can see you put that together with mm. you know the other existing technologies. And maybe that's what happens down the pub on Saturday night when mm. there's a there's a cover band on. Well, venues are going to have to get um, multi-conforming systems, mm. so we're not forever resetting. Mm. Mm. Well, there's a that's there's already an happening. economic advantage. I mean, but I I find it harder to imagine automated lighting, like you know, especially in a, in a larger concert, you know. Uh, Oh, you, presentation. You're going to need the creative. Yeah. But we're already seeing some very crappy event production where the lighting's just on a cycle and mm. the music stops and the speech starts and yeah. the moving lights are still doing this. I mean, that's just so <laughs> that's lazy. That's going to look very, very It's bad. happening all over the place. Really? That's yeah, generic it. lighting. That's mm. why we need the people power. I, I feel mm. sad. That's, that's just so wrong. Mm. When um, it's taking the job of producers or mixing mm. engineers, mm. It, things like that, especially in the music field. But in that regard, I think there's still is value in the person, you know, in their expertise in bringing it. But yes, it's when you see a, a video like that, when it's so good mm. that it makes you scared. You're like, okay, a machine can now do my job better than me. Mm. Okay. So what, are the, what are the virtues people need to take into the future to well, succeed? This is the question and we're going to talk about it after we come back. Symmetrix have announced the Prism Zero by Zero, the latest in the company's Prism series of Dante-enabled DSPs. Offering expansion via 64 channels of bi-directional Dante networking, the new Prism Zero by Zero delivers cost-effective processing, mixing and routing for Dante-enabled endpoints. Used as the DSP core of a Dante network, or as a DSP coprocessor, Prism Zero by Zero is ideally suited for applications requiring powerful, cost-effective advanced signal processing, coupled with an industry-standard networked audio interface. And 
and welcome back. We're talking about our jobs and how we can keep them within 10 years. Mm. I, I don't know if this is possible, but perhaps if we look at some personal qualities. Mm. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You can't really predict what technology is going to do. Mm. Uh, you can't predict what jobs are going to exist if you know, don't even have a name for them. So really, it's going to be about what qualities we as humans have mm. to work on to, to keep ahead of the game. And yeah, I've got yeah. ideas. You, yeah. You've got to figure out your strengths and weaknesses, be self-aware. Uh, if, you, if you feel good, you look good. Mm. And looking good is very important. But feel good isn't always going to get you a job. No, but you've got to project the right visage. It, it can help yep. in a job interview. Yeah, I think create be, being creative and being flexible. It doesn't mean you have to be a great artist or anything. It can, you can be creative in any field. Yeah, you be can create creative technically. Uh, you can be flexible and not freaking out every time something changes, which and, I think is and very reading up, just learning the industry, yeah, what's yeah. about to to come up, what's what am I competing with? Yeah, yeah. and yeah, you're competing exactly. against people that are educated and and they've they've learned. So education's mm. the key. Mm. Yeah, understanding that there's industries like healthcare, policing, the fabric of society, teaching mm. that we'll always need, and we'll always need quality waiters and quality chefs. Mm. And there'll always be a, a service component. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there will also always be art and entertainment, and people need yeah. to make it and then make it happen. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think you know we, we're never going to be able to completely automate the process of making a thing happen. I mean, what, what's happened a lot in terms of entertainment technology is now we every time something new comes along, we can now do more things, mm. and we do more things, and we do more amazing things. Yeah. And so you know things just keep going. I, I think net. I, don't, I can't see much work actually going away in terms of our industry, in terms of art and you know, whether it's, you know, rock music or high art or ballet or, or whatever, it's all still well, going to happen. There's going to be a lot of consolidation. Hey, yeah. you know, one of, the, one of the funny parallels of being an old-style roadie back mm. in the day was um, I thought I'm ever going to be a roadie or a chef okay. because it's kind of the same. Deadlines, pressure, heat, yeah. chaos, <laughs> <Yes>. explosion, <laughs> danger. <Yeah>. Sharp knives. <laughs> all right. Well, apparently you're also going to have to keep on top of gear, and a good way to do that is uh, we're going to have a bit of a preview of uh, what's in Gearbox. Well, Julius, another gearbox, yet another digital mixer in a tiny, tiny format. That's a whole engine right there. It is, it is. It's the Allen & Heath QSB. Now, uh, those of you be familiar with the Q series from Allen & Heath, there's a range of models now. Uh, this is kind of like the Q Pack, which is a stage box sort of form factor as well, but they've removed all of the controls from the front panel. So as you can see from looking at it, we've got inputs, we've got outputs, and we've got some connectivity, including to the wireless access point that mm, we have running on the back. You've got a whole lot more than what's on the front here. You do, you do. Well, if you want to see any more of that video, you can check it out on this link. Well, I've be enjoyed the topic today. I don't know if I'll be here in 10 years, <laughs> so who knows? I hope, hope so. I <laughs> hope this show will be around. I won't be around. But we will see you next week on The Hump. Bye. Bye.